Hello and welcome to another episode of Schnozcast. Your guests tonight, Bob, Corey, Nick, and Todd. Your hosts? Well, we're guests in their home, Corey. In their home. In their ears. Start over. On their eyeballs. (laughs) Shut it down. (laughs) Oh, hey, welcome back. Hello and welcome to another episode of Schnozcast. Your hosts tonight... Thank you. Some might also say the guests in your home. Bob, Corey, Nick, and Todd. Corey, how are you, sir? Caught me mid-drink there, buddy. That's why. I'm like, who should Jesus. I start with? Oh, drink. It's Corey. Yeah. Not bad. How about yourself? Doing well. Nick Bader. Hey, 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 sports fans. Todd, that's the green light for you to start sports anytime you want. <laughs> Let's do it. Todd, what... What adjective are you going to use today? How are you, sir? I am freaking amazing. Amazing. It is a good day to be alive. Well said, sir. Well said. Uh, You know what? Yes, sir. I think my camera has some Corey fingers on it. It's a little blurry. blurry. A little blurry Corey fingers. We can fix that. Yeah. You guys continue on. Dusty fingerprints. All right. Uh, let's go through housekeeping. Hey, if you're new to the show, oh, I can't do it. Corey, are you going to get up and do the camera? Because I can wait to do the housekeeping. I got it. All right. Wow. If you're new to the show, thank you for joining us. You can follow us uh, each and every week or go back and look at uh, or listen to old episodes out in the streaming services, wherever you get a podcast. You can also follow us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok, all at Schnozcast. You can email us. At schnozcast at gmail.com. God, that's sexy. With that uh, <laughs> rag over the camera. Oh, no, I hope he didn't. I hope it was still on, on the air. No. I'm, but I'm more professional than that, Bob. Well Come played. on now. Well done. Uh, you can email us at schnozcast at gmail.com, or you can call or text us anytime, day or night, at 618 Shocker. On the Shocker line, baby! Shocker! That was a long one. I'm like, that, no, there's he, a lot of static coming he, up from he Seattle. Had, he had to take another breath and wind up again. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, Nick's doing his thing. <laughs> that was a great recovery, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Todd's seeing Fantastic. spots. Todd's seeing spots right now. <laughs> I got the smoker's oh. lung. The smoker's lung. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, this is uh, our December second show, and uh, uh, next week we are going to have uh, a special guest, Dave Hill. So this will be the last episode that uh, new episode you get from, from us uh, until that time, and that time and date is one p.m. Eastern time on December tenth. You will be able to uh, stream us live on where Corey YouTube, YouTube and Facebook. Absolutely. So uh, do yourself a favor, head out right now. If you haven't followed us there or subscribed, please do so. You'll get a notification when we go live. Or you can pick up your phone right now and go in the calendar and make an entry saying, watch the Schnozcast at 1 p.m. Eastern. On that day, we're actually going to have two people with talent on the show. Well, two and a half. Wait, hold on. What? (laughs) All three of us equal a half? (laughs) I'm happy to get the half, to be honest with you. Well, you weren't getting a whole half, Bob. All three of us got a half that we have to split. I don't think I've ever cried <laughs> in this podcast. But I think about starting. I like how the the latest comer to the podcast is the one talking the most shit about himself. Not the latest comer. Well, I take my time. <laughs> Long yeah, strokes. He can't be the latest comer. We just saw him clean off his camera. Put it take in your mouth time. and suck it. <laughs> oh, it's the season for my chocolate salty balls, man. Huh? I got to get my recipe out there. Would that get us kicked off of YouTube, Corey? If Todd just launched into a full rendition, lyrics and all of Chocolate Salty Balls? Can I do it? Can I do I it? I mean, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near what Chef would do. So, yeah, we're probably fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, if, if I come up just a little short of Isaac Hayes, I feel like I'm doing pretty darn good. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. say, but I'm I wouldn't say for you. I wouldn't say just short, but anyway. <laughs> well... Well, when you're already really short, uh, probably yeah, just short seems. And you would know the best out of all of us. Oh, starting early. <laughs> starting early. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, boy. Getting, getting, getting salty in here. 
It's that holiday season, but you can't bring me down today. Can't bring me down today. You know why? Do you know why? Mm -mm. Somebody asked me. I feel like you're going to tell us why. I'm going to tell you why. All right. The University of Michigan Wolverines, <laughs> they are undefeated. <laughs> Technically, that's news, Nick. That's not sports. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed. You can't bring me down today. If that's the game we want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's exploiting a loophole. Word to the mother. Saw a couple news programs where they posed a question to the audience. Wonder if we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Getting salty in here early. Can't bring me down. It's the holiday season, baby. Holiday season. Yes, sir. So speaking of holiday season, um, Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir. So Thanksgiving has come and gone. It has. The Super Bowl of cooking for me. Yes. And so were you victorious? Dude, as usual. I mean, I know I'm patting myself on the back a little bit, and you know how humble I am. Uh, I knocked it out of the park. Knocked it right out of the park. Okay, so this is uh, your opinion or Mary's? Uh, everybody who uh, indulged this year. Okay, did you, did you have a full house? So no, we we had kind of the we we did a weird nope. thing. We went to our neighbors for on Thanksgiving Day. Okay, and uh, they they great and and for the first time in my life, I had an air outdoor air fried uh, turkey, and I asked what I could bring, and I was able to bring stuffing, and so I did the thing that. You know, I would do. I did a traditional, the the stuffing I grew up with, a cornbread stuffing uh, that was masterfully done, and I think it's really, really good. And I actually I, I, I changed for the first time in my life. I <laughs> continue. No one said. No one said anything. No, I, I, I heard okay. myself. I heard myself speaking to myself. But anyway, so I, I, okay. I tw I changed it up a little bit, and uh, I I, put, I grated a little breakfast sausage into my cornbread stuffing. Uh, the little sausage links, and uh, it was really, Jimmy really Dean? good. Jimmy little Jimmy Dean? Dean's in there, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Is that is that the preferred breakfast sausage, Nick Bader? Yeah. All right, you got there. You go. There, and I, so I was on, I was on script, but we I'd never had that as a child. But a buddy of mine mentioned that he had a cornbread stuffing with sausage, and I'm like, that's a pretty darn good idea. So I changed it up, made my traditional what I grew up with cornbread stuffing, and then I think I've shared this on the podcast before. I thought I would never ever like a regular bread stuffing, uh, but I make a French bread stuffing uh, that has lots of uh, uh, sauteed onions and some cr dried cranberries and walnuts. Again, I know people are going, oh, they're making that sound, uh, but I Why? make a pretty masterful one. And I was Hold pleasantly on. surprised. Do, do people not like dried cranberries in their stuffing? People don't like fruits in their stuffings, especially uh, people uh, with a little bit of little bit of melon. I, I don't. I don't understand that, <laughs> and I, I I don't mean to derail your story, but help me understand why people don't like you. You're having a giant plate. I assume everybody does what I do, and they put a little bit of something all over the plate. So you got turkey, you got stuffing, you got cranberry, you got yeah. potatoes. Yeah. It's all on the same plate. Yeah, it, and at some point they're going to touch, and you might get a little bit of cranberry. But it's not, well, it's not. It's, it's like, not. Gross. It's not that. No, no, it's and it's not. It's actually that's a different different part of it. Typically, in my, I've had horrible stuffings for forever. Other than again, grew up with cornbread stuffing, but usually bread stuffings are all gooey, like eating a, a really really wet piece of bread with no flavor, and then fruits and nuts in it, and it's horrible. Fruits uh, and nuts. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we were just talking. Well, cranberries about. are fruits. He, he puts dried cranberries in his stuffing. I do, and, and walnuts. Now, I, I've never did I it would, before. I would definitely try that. It, but he's saying yeah. people are I'm, generally. I'm more a fan of, a this, fan of like a savory sage based kind of stuffing. Yeah. And I and so I have sage based sage in my cornbread stuffing as well. So yes, but I I have a I have a thing that I I adopted from my trip to Hawaii, my Thanksgiving Hawaii trip, uh, and I did both of them for the, our neighbors, and both of them were a hit. So uh, that was that was that, uh, and then we had a post Thanksgiving with our old neighbors in Redmond, Washington, where we first, when we first moved here, our old neighbors invited us over. But then on Saturday, I got to have my, uh, get her done. And so I deep fried a 19 pound Turkey. Uh, I did some badass mashed potatoes. I did 
a couple of uh, sweet potato pies. I did some uh, collard greens and kale. I did uh, some mac and cheese with uh, a little bit of spicy uh, Mexican blend uh, in my cheese. Everything turned out fabulous. Uh, it's just and for I you think, and Mary? Oh, yeah. Fuck, that sounds like a lot of food. It is. Okay. You know, Mary's a big eater. <laughs> so no leftovers then, huh? <laughs> it was all gone. Every no, day we're day. actually, dude, we're still enjoying sandwiches. And the funnier thing is, because I knew I wasn't going to be cooking for th- on Thanksgiving Day, I couldn't help myself. And we had a smaller turkey that one of my friends had given us that I smoked on the grill the week before. So I'm still making sandwiches off that thing, too. When you were Jesus. when you were holding like decanting or you know placing the nineteen pound turkey into a pan, you obviously had to hold it for a few for a few moments. Did you really empathize with uh, Corky Selesky for carrying Corey for as long as she did? <laughs> I thought he'd have been more like a Cornish hen. I mean, it's for short as he is. Corey, are your ear pieces working? <laughs> Yep. Okay. <laughs> no, no acknowledgement. No, no reason to. Okay. Right. <laughs> wow. What, Corey? What, can can you just settle a debate real quick? Just just real quick. Humor both of us. Which did you appreciate less? That joke being referenced as a Cornish hen or a nineteen pound turkey. <laughs> so they're pretty even. Oh, okay. they're, they're equally insulting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Come right. to find out. <laughs> well, I'll choose. Yeah, at least the Cornish hands are quick. <laughs> Todd Dillon, what are you drinking tonight? Dude, I got myself a little bit of Crown Apple. Mm-hmm. And, and for my beer, my beer choice tonight, you know, Sierra Nevada makes an amazing oh, something wow. little. <laughs> Hazy little thing called love, baby. Hazy little thing called love, baby. Hazy well, Todd, IPA. I'm Todd sure Dillon, all I have to say to you is you are a trendsetter, my friend, because we have schnozzers out there texting the schnozcast line, the shocker line, saying that they have purchased Crown Apple because of Todd Dillon and listening to the show. That is true. Work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 100%. And they said, that is true. Boy, oh boy, is this smooth. And so is the Crown Apple. Do you Word have a, to the do you have it Thank airlifted you. in by the case? <laughs> oh no, by the, by the gross. He's he's got he's got his own fucking Rick number on his own barrel. No, I I have a great wife who picks it up, keeps me keeps me full of of Crown Apple, a little bit little bit little bit daft. That way, uh, you know, she gets her way. Wow, well, I can't wait to the, get to the conversation where she gets her way. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and pour yourself a shot. Got Todd it ready. Dillon. All right, got it ready, so baby. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Salute. <sighs> That's the good stuff, baby. Oh, yeah. So I asked about Thanksgiving to segue then into the next holiday. Have you started? I know you're eating. Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa? Left. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Leftovers. Thank you're you, welcome. Nick. You're welcome. <laughs> Have you started setting up for Kwanzaa? Have I started setting up for Kwanzaa? So... Yeah, I'm still what, what drunk you, from the last blast hit washing Black History your, Month. Wa- washing your Kwanzaa robes, <laughs> <laughs> growing your Kwanzaa beard. I, I am a Christian, so I, I, I'm. I'm we're, I, I like to blend it all together. A little Christmas Kwanzaa Hanukkah. I got it all going, baby. I, I, I'm getting ready tight. for it. Happy <laughs> Merry Christmas Kwanzaa Hanukkah to yeah, you, baby. Yeah, baby. I'm celebrating it all. I'm celebrating it all for I, all peoples. I am not Whatever. Sure. But that might be the episode title. I just got to figure out how to spell it. Happy Merry how, Christmas, how Hanukkah. Christmas, Hanukkah. Yeah. Christmas Kwanzaa Hanukkah. How do I spell it? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sound it out. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? If you were to lay a exactly. math you're an English that, major. I'd be like, dude, can you just sketch that out on a blackboard for me, please? Well, I would say, Todd would, I would say Todd would spell it out for you, but he's not good with science. <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's how you know, science, though. Even worse, even worse with math. <laughs> science math. Put the two together, and son of a bitch, we got a problem. That's science. Oh, man. That's science. All right, so looking, looking past Kwanzaa, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. When, when do you do the Christmas tree setup? So this is where, again, I'm surprised Mary's not up, up here finger-wagging me right now to use a Oh, Nick, she's in the show. Nickism. She's watching. <laughs> She is she, Mary. It's not up yet. It'll the, the Christmas tree will go up when Mary says, Todd, can you go out and get the tree? 
and put it up. So is and, it a, is it a is it a real tree every year? Oh hell no, bro. Hell okay. no. So do you go get a new fake tree every year? No, no, no. We got the same fake tree that takes me like 13 seconds to put up. So when she says, "Could you go out and get the tree?" Where are you going to get this tree? Well, he gets the special to one, gold, to one of the, the sheds. He gets the no, no, no. Oh, you have a Christmas tree shed. He gets the oh, special gold key. Yeah, with the Santa sash on it and the in the bell, the jingle yep, bell, which he puts in the hasp. And he he goes out to the Chris, <laughs> goes out to the Christmas cottage, the Christmas cottage, un, unlocks <laughs> unlocks it for the first time. Yep. And that FAO Schwartz, welcome to our world of toys song plays in the background while it's he opens it up. Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks is dancing on a piano. He's like, oh man, he's like, you know, how costly this is. To Merry have- Christmas, Mister Dillon. Every, every every year to have Tom Hanks dancing on this piano, dude, I can the- visualize this. This is almost how it happens every year. He would get that other guy, but that guy's dead. That other guy? You mean the Tim Allen? No, who's oh, who's the time. other guy that was dancing on the piano with him with the red hair? Oh, shit! That's a great. It's a good question. <sighs> Texas at six one eight shocker. If you know the actor's name, or put it in the chat. He had kind of a, a sinewy smoker Tom, voice. Tom Hanks' boss. Yes, he was in a. T- he's been in a ton of movies. Yeah, great character actor. Dead now. Put it in the chat if you know his name. We'll give you. We'll give you a shout out. We'll send you a prize. <laughs> But yeah, um, so it looks like tomorrow. Based on uh, that, based on the chat, it looks like uh, I'll be putting that tree up tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Christmas cabin. And then, tree. and then here's the here now here's here's the weird thing. Mm-hmm. Next to the said tree, Mary's gonna make me get these creepy little gnome things that uh, she's she bought like a gazillion. They're like real. They're like Corey size, freaking. <laughs> so the gnomes you have next to your tree are taller than you. <laughs> Wow, that's impressive, buddy. <laughs> and dude, they I, freak me out. Mary sets them. There's like one that she puts in the corner of the stairs, and I'm like, when I walk by, I swear that little <laughs> motherfucker is looking at me. <laughs> I'm so glad we didn't put the camera on the table. I would have shaken that bitch right off the oh, table. Oh man, yeah, see, that's exactly. <laughs> those those shaky old dusty elbows. <laughs> Hold on. So she she bought. Christmas gnomes? Yeah, she has these Christmas. I think that are normally meant to go outside in the snow. No, 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 no. no. These are like indoor, life size elf mannequins. Yeah, I was gonna say. You're talking like it's inside. You're talking about a mannequin. The thing that's outside is a gnome. But if you put it in the in the house, no, 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 sir. I can tell you, I can tell you, you are very incorrect there. I've never seen an indoor gnome. I have. You're breaking my brain. Freaks me out every time I walk past it. Oh, I don't. I don't doubt it. (laughs) So, Todd, I, I, Danielle cannot hear this episode because if she is aware that there's <laughs> even little gnomes that are a little taller than what we have, then I know we're going to have those gnomes in the goddamn house. And I do not want that. You know how confused she would be? Like if, I had a beer, if I had a beer right now, I'd be stroking it going. Mm. Todd, why would she be confused? I think he, I think he got the joke. You didn't have to go back to it. It's the oh holiday God. season. It's oh the holiday god. season. Oh my god! Wait, Corey. <laughs> I, th- this was not. Yeah, this was not planned. I don't know why <laughs> this is happening. Hilarious. I really should be doing a better job of refereeing this whole thing, but I, I just don't have it in there. Here, Bob, are you happy? It's been a long week. Yes. 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 So that's that. That's the only thing I that really is kind of the downside. Tell Danielle about those indoor hey. gnomes. Hmm. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I need to I need to shift the <laughs> pendulum yeah. back another direction and, and, Thank you. and dish it off to Corey. I know. I, I just have something I wanted to cover real sure. quick because I I had some I went and did something this week that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Yes. And in speaking with the the artist that I went to, um, I told her that we'd give her a shout out on the show. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And nude, uh, nude portrait of you and Danielle. That's right. Mostly me. Um, <laughs> get out there's of the way! Of, so there's a lot of hair in this. Who's, who's, who's that squirrel in that tree in the distance? Oh, look! The, look at the face on it. Oh, no, all the way back there. Me front and center. Yeah. Um, no, I saw. So I went. I thirteen years ago, I got a tattoo for my father. Uh, it was a very hasty decision and not. Very well planned. The idea of the tattoo was well thought out, and what it was for was thought out, obviously. 
the artist and the place I went to was not. It was very rushed, like last minute. We're going here. Sure. Uh, it's the closest place. I gave the guy the uh, what I was looking for. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. And, of course, being 21, I was like, sure, go ahead, buddy. And uh, we had been up drinking the entire week uh, every night after the funeral uh, and funeral home. Little did I know you're not supposed to drink before you go get a tattoo. No, I think you knew that. I think circumstances. <laughs> not, little did I know you you put that knowledge aside in the interest of. Well, I mean, at 21, I guess maybe I I didn't really think about that. I was like, oh, I knew you at 21. Yeah, there was no thought not, given to not not really thought on that at all. No, but so we went and did it, and I, I was bleeding like a sieve, and the guy just kept on sitting there putting trying to get the ink in over and over and over and over again. So this. Maybe twenty minute tattoo turned into a three hour process, and once once it all healed and everything like that, it did not heal the greatest. The color didn't turn out the greatest. Um, that's my fault mostly. But it's your first tattoo. Yeah, and my, I say mostly because the rest of it. it I your mean, first and only tattoo for thirteen years. Well, yeah, because after this one, I was uh, I was kind of scarred by it. I'm like, I don't know if I want to go back and get more if they're going to turn out like this. Yeah, literally. So, and wait, and how old were you when it occurred to you that maybe I shouldn't have drank an entire fifth of Jack Daniels before I got that tattoo? <laughs> the second he said that I shouldn't have done that the <laughs> yeah, night before. Exactly. But, Corey, exactly. I mean, to people that don't know, I, I also knew you at 21. Wasn't there some sort of record set for days drinking in a row when you turned 21? There might have been. Didn't I, Didn't we say that it was like, 31 days of going to the bar or something like that. I, I remember we counted it out because <laughs> we were taking breaks in between and I found out that in, in, in betwixt the time that I had gone out. <laughs> did you say betwixt? He did yeah. say betwixt. I, and I'm, I, and I'm feeling like we should, he should minute. not put any money in the freaking no, 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 jar. It was no. intentional. It was intentional. And, uh, okay. for, for comedic relief noted. Um, yeah. but, I'll allow I, it. I, I remember I was I was so it. haggard, like I had to take a couple of days off. And the next time I saw you, I was like, "Oh man, well, you know, how how are you feeling after the day before? You know, at least you had some time to rest." And he was like, "No, no, no." The next day I went out with Bob, and the day after that I went out with Kev Hart or something like that. I was like, "Wait, so you've been out ever since you turned?" I'm like, "You turned 21 like 15 days ago." You're like, "Yeah, let's see see how many days in a row I can go." I thought you said you went like 30 days or something. Like oh yeah, that. I, I don't know. It was so long ago. I didn't. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't tell you. But have I ever told the? And I'm really sorry to derail your story, but real quick, have I talked about the me going out with you for your 21st? I'm sure we have. Do you remember the story? No, I don't. I'll tell, so, uh, how come I wasn't invited, you prick? Because <laughs> uh, you were in Seattle, sir. No, no, no. He and? was living in. He was living in Livonia at the time. I and oh, yeah. Oh, and um, and you're black. <laughs> Wow! Well, Jeez! Wow! Thank you for thank you for putting it on the table. We're good to go. Wow! <laughs> hey, let's get, just get some. Let let's me just get, quickly yeah. steer this conversation back toward normal. Get some honesty right out there in the open. So, uh, it's, so your your side of the family, yeah, and, and which included my wife at the time, your cousin Christy, and her two brothers, Nick and Andy. Uh, Nick's been on the show. Uh, all went out to Bailey's to celebrate your birthday. Yeah. And uh, and th that was the plan. You showed up. Uh, I think you'd already been out drinking for several hours by the time we got there, and mm -hmm. w and we decided to buy you a round of shots. And um, I, I think that uh, between me and Andy, um, we had it in our mind that we were going to match you shot for shot. No, oh, why, why not? And yeah, it's at, so at some point, both he and I ended up going to the bathroom to throw up. <laughs> and by the time we got back, perfect. Corey would like down a shot, and then he would go back to his phone, and he's like, dit, 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 dit. "I don't think there were touch yep. screens back." Then. Yep, I will. Uh, you know, he had a BlackBerry, I'm sure. Not, yeah, not at that point. Not no. at that point. No. At any rate, you were, you were, you know, he was courting it, courting it, sure. Yeah. Um, getting ready to I'm for trying. wherever, wherever you're gonna go after that dinner was over. You're like, okay, this dinner's got to be over pretty soon. These two jackasses can't keep up with me. Oh, you guys are all wasted. Could, yeah. We, we could not. I, I'm not sure why we thought we could keep up with you. Well, he's 21. He's probably just new to drinking. Uh, <laughs> just kind of getting a handle on the alcohol thing. school, Bob. <laughs> hey, well, hang on, though. I, I will say, in my, in my defense, yeah. 
I didn't drink until I was 20 when I, <laughs> when I met the Fairlane crew and started hanging out with them. No, don't okay. point in my direction. No, it's <laughs> definitely in your no, direction. Don't point in my direction. <laughs> you, were, you were definitely part of that. But, yeah, that's but what, when you did start, it was full so steam it, ahead. Well, yeah, because I, like I said, I, I worked with these idiots, and yeah. they wanted to hang out every night, and I was like, oh, might as well. Referencing us is really right. going downhill. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, yeah, that was my real quick story. Back to, right, back yeah, to yeah. your, uh, the artist. Yeah, so I, it, it was a very rushed, hasty thing to go do, and it, it, after everything healed and everything was said and done, I was like, ah, this doesn't look the greatest. And I, I've just kind of lived with it ever since um, because, I, again, I do fully appreciate why I got it mm-hmm. and, you know, getting it for my dad. Um, but the, uh, the the quality and, and the look of it just wasn't wasn't there. It wasn't what I expected. Right. Uh, and then, but it also kind of made me leery to go back and get another one because I'm like, if it's going to turn out looking like this, then I'm just going to have a, an arm full of shitty tattoos. But I, I will... I will agree with you. I, I will say that it was it was awesome for the time. Yeah, and I I mean, and artists, tattoo artists have progressed in in more recent years and what they can do and all this and that. Did you have a group on? I should have had a group on uh, for the tattoo I got. <laughs> but at the time, they would have said group on. What does that mean? <laughs> right. So, uh, so anyways, here we are, thirteen years later, and I, I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to get it fixed. And about a year and a half ago, uh, a girl I work with, she has a, a bunch of tattoos and a bunch of work done. She gave me a name of someone that's local and was like, this, this girl does great work. So I looked up her Instagram and the second I saw the first several pictures, I was like, wow, like Jesus, this is like Kat Von D, like Vegas level kind of tattooing. Mm-hmm. So I just happened to like reach out to her. Just a cartoon level or below that? Huh? Can't man do. Oh, Mr. Cartoon? Yeah. Maybe, maybe I, just a little below that. I, he, okay. he, Mr. Cartoon's, a, a, yeah, I mean, obviously that's that's a whole other level. But tell, me when you want to go to, t- tell me when you're out to see him. I'll, I'll look you up. Because you and all your tattoos? Well, no, no. I I don't have tattoos, but I know <laughs> Todd's I not people, actually black. No people. Right. <laughs> He's, it's all tattoos. I know, I know, people, people, who know, I know people. people who know people. Yeah. So anyways. So I, I'm I, saying? I reached I out to her. I know people. And uh, waited about a year and a half and finally got a text like two months ago from her that she's like, hey, I have openings if you want to set something up. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So I, all I did was just send her basically hobbies and things I like. Um, and so that being the water, kayaking up north, and the Big Lebowski. And then I did send her one picture of a nautical compass that I was like, I, I want to incorporate that somehow as well. And then my dad's badge number, obviously. Um, she's like, all right, let me, let me get everything together. And th- the day before I actually went to see her, she sent me a, uh, a mock-up of, of what she had, you know, what she was thinking. And the only thing she, did, she didn't have, there was nothing from the Big Lebowski because she kind of had a theme in mind with the water and kayaking and, and Talos and all that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, that's fine. If we can't fit, you know, something from the Big Lebowski in there, we can make that a separate piece, no problem. So... Went in uh, and saw her on Wednesday and spent six hours in the chair. You know, it was probably about five and a half. Five and a half hours in the chair. And, dude, she completely killed this tattoo. I mean, it's through. It's it's amazing. I cannot say enough about the work she did. Oh, and, and, and just so everyone can get her name out there, it, it's Kate. Kate Darling is her name. And I'll put all her socials up here yeah, in a second. Her, yeah, what's her handle on uh, Instagram? Oh yeah, et we'll, we'll get. To, I I made her a special little. And just just so you're aware, when you referenced all you idiots, uh, got me started on drinking. All you idiots from Fairlane, um, Sean McGuire <laughs> just entered the room, so hopefully he was able to. Hear oh, he that was one well. of those idiots. Yeah. Hopefully he was able to hear that. <laughs> what's up, Sean? Hey, Sean. <laughs> so, as you guys can see here, this was this was my old tattoo. Um, like I said, I, obviously the, the coloring. Had went to to shit after quite some time, and after the initial healing, we, we should we should make sure and point out for people that this is a mirror image of it. You don't actually have backwards numbers on your arm. True, yeah, that is that is very true. Gotcha. Um, and then I'm not gonna lie. Over all the years, the the lettering that I got underneath it, the for those who dare, I was like, oh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I you don't know why you did that. I mean, I shouldn't have included that in there. I should have just left it as well, as the one. That, wasn't that part of it? 
No. You just came up with it? it it's it's, a, it's kind of part of it, but it wasn't part of the, of the idea of the one asterisk badge. Okay. So um, that's, you can see the, the little mock-up that she put over it. And I was like, oh, man, all right, this is, it's looking, looking pretty good already. And as you guys will see in the next picture, um, she put a, a white house on the inside of my arm. And the second I saw it and opened it up when she sent me the, the mock-up, I was like, I think I know what that is. Mm-hmm. And so when I went and saw her, we met face to face, she goes, that, you know, that's the, the Talos Lighthouse, right? I was like, I definitely know that. Come to find out, her family goes up every year as well. And they've been doing it for the last 30 years. So that's awesome. It was really cool that she came up with the idea of the lighthouse, the Talos Lighthouse for me. And then the fact that she also has a connection to the place and was the one giving me the tattoo, I thought was really, really cool. Well, stop bearing the lead, dude. Go to the next picture so we can see the finished product. How would the where'd the rest of your body go that it's just disappearing behind your arm? <laughs> it, it is 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 anyone gonna take a break from piling on Corey today? No, no, I no. Did. no. You, I did. I didn't say anything. He, it's he, coming. He, you I know, know it's do coming. You know, how many I, you know how many I love you? So he's gonna get after the show. We have to balance it out. And I gave him a pre. Yeah, that's, I gave, that's probably good. not give Corey a pre-show. I love you. Oh, that's awesome. So after five and a half hours, this is the finished product that she gave me. And super cool. Dude, I, I again I couldn't be happier with it. Um so you got obviously my dad's badge number up there. Uh and my number. Little kayaking guy right there. <laughs> oh shit. I didn't even think about that, Todd. Yeah, boy. I noticed it right away, dude. Maybe Uncle, if you go Uncle back, Porky and I are linked, baby. It only take like an hour or so for the Uncle put, like, Porky a and I are linked, baby. Around the thirty two. Uh, and no, dude, Todd? dude, hey, Bob, no. Bob, and no. dude, do you know what's even more perfect about that? Every time you, Bob's, Bob, and I have done this for forever. Every time you go to Vegas or a casino, what do I tell you to play? Twenty three and thirty two. Wow. Oh man, I thought it was thirty four this whole time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so Rest yeah, in so peace, it, Uncle Porky. Love you to death, man. So yeah, she, uh, she definitely, and and as you can see, like I said, I, I wanted the lettering gone, and she covered that up. So perfect, you can't. Yeah, even, you can't even tell it's there. No, not it, at all. And and the way she layered the nautical compass over the one asterisk badge, that's crazy. And then the two three two behind the one asterisk, um, and then you know it, it it's almost like a whole little scene of of the kayaker kayaking towards the yeah. the lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, and what and, a, what a cool like like almost turquoise blue. You know that's. Yeah, the color. Yeah, you don't do. I I haven't seen that on tattoos. No, neither have I. That particular shade. That's of blue. a very bright blue. And as a matter of fact, I was go. I was going through a catalog uh, yesterday, and she did. This is the first tattoo like this with this kind of coloring that she's done. But it, while she did all that, she also took the uh, one star badge and. Like, oh, she went. Yeah, she went. Up. Went back over that. Um, put more black in it. Yeah, uh, the blue the blue stripe, the diagonal stripe seems really bright. Really pops. Yeah. yeah, she she was looking at it and she's like, I don't mean to be rude, but this is supposed to be dark, right? I'm like, oh no, it definitely is. And she, I mean, like I said, she knew the whole story of you know what happened and all that because sure. we had plenty of time to talk. Um, but again, yeah, I I'm so, so happy and that I finally got this done and that she was the one to to be able to do it for me because this work is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's um, crazy. Sean says it looks and, great, man. Gina says it looks so sweet. And on, on top of that, when we were about 20 minutes into the tattoo, mm-hmm. uh, she had her phone connected to the speaker in there, and it was playing through songs. And all of a sudden, I was like, hey, I'm like, is this like a playlist you play like when you're doing a tattoo? Like, I figure you have all your songs like already pre-set up. And she's like, no, no, it's just a random Spotify list. Well, Foo Fighters, My Hero came on. And that's the song that I equate to my dad the, the most in the world. And that's what Callie and I danced to at Callie's wedding for her um, father daughter dance. Wow. And I said, awesome. I said, you're, you're serious. Like this is a completely random song. She's like, yeah. So now I told her the story and I was sitting there just trying not to lose it. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to look so stupid doing this. <laughs> so I'm just staring at the wall and it's quiet for a second. Finally, she throws I, I look down and I see a paper towel on my lap. So I grabbed it. I was like, hey, thanks. Like, sorry about that. And she was quiet. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I guess maybe I upset her or something. And I looked over and she was choking up, trying to hold tears back. And she's like, 
okay, well, let's just continue this on. I'm like, well, all right, sorry, about, like, <laughs> sorry about that. I wasn't sure. She's like, Dad. She's like, I'll tell you what. She's like, if you're not, she's like, I don't know if you're a believer or not, but if if yeah, you're not, boy. that should definitely make you believe right there that you're getting this done. That song came on. I, I don't mean boy. to be a dick, but you were sitting there for six straight fucking hours. This was 20 minutes in. You're a dick, Bob. Well. <laughs> Yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. The odds of you hearing a meaningful song in six hours is pretty high. No, it pretty was, good it, chance. It was, it was within, it was the, was within the first, first 15, 20 minutes that I was in the chair that it came on. Finger waggers. They're always going to be there. Yeah. Did I ever tell the story about how Bob ripped off people for Big Brothers Big Sisters? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, do you have any re- cans? Real yeah. quick to, to wrap this all up. <laughs> sure. And, and as a matter of fact, she's she is opening her own shop come January. Uh-huh. Um, she, current, right now, she's working out of a friend of her shop, um, but she will have her own place in, in January. And she still have a one-year waiting list? She still has a waiting list, um, unfortunately. I don't know what the time is on it. I, okay. I did not ask her. Um, I got I got her Instagram up on the screen right now. Okay. Uh, Katie, uh, her Instagram is Katie A. Darling. Okay. Katie's awesome. And then let me throw up, I'll throw up her Instagram handle here. And her, her follower is going to triple after the exposure. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so yeah, boy. Got her e- email up on the screen as well. That's the one way to contact her if you're looking to get on the booking list. Uh, email her. She will get in contact with you. Like I said, I, I emailed her. Uh, it took took a couple months before she got back to me, but she did. And again, I can't say enough about uh, about Katie and, and and the work that she she does. So anyone and, lo- looking to get something new, touched up, covered up, anything, please please email her. She, you you will not be disappointed. I I'm gonna sign up for something new as long as Kate makes one more adjustment to your tattoo, where. In in that silhouette, there's you and I standing back to back, and me clearly being taller than you. <laughs> Todd, if you pay for it, I'll get that on my back. <laughs> so I'm here to hear, folks. Where 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 is she located for those that are interested? Uh, Geographically, right, right now she's in on uh, 23 Mile in Chesterfield. Um, hell, I I mean just ba- Madison Chesterfield Lifestyle. Township. Or, yeah. Okay. okay. Michigan for those for those people who I've pulled if you're in. in Sweden, or yeah. as they say, or in Washington, locally, Sweden. Mm. This would be in Michigan. Mm. Yeah. 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 Not at all close. It's, it's definitely in Michigan. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Her her shop that she's opening up is going to be kind of in the same area. But if you go to her Instagram, uh, she's got the name of her new shop and and the location, and everything like that on there. Uh. So go go check it out. KDA Darling. Awesome. Nice work, Katie. Very cool. We do have uh, followers in Europe. How awesome would it be if they were like, I saw your show, and I think I'm going to fly to the States so I can go Chesterfield Township. Right. (laughs) I am am from Europa. I saw the Snuzzcast, and they went to go over there and get a very old, new blue tattoo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A very short man. Uh, said that uh, I would. No, no, the bit's good. over, Todd. This is done. <laughs> just, we've already taken it too far. Damn it! <laughs> but, hold like, on, but hold on, Todd. This is fun. Can I get involved? <laughs> hold on, Todd. Now you got the mic, and we're going to put Nick back in his place and uh, sitting back in his chair because I'm going to dish it off to you for 90 seconds more. Oh, hell yeah. And we see him heading in that direction. The 20. Uh-huh. He's going for 40. And it's 90 seconds for I always find it uh, supremely sweet that the segment that you really could do without is one that your voice is attached to to kick it off. <laughs> hey, man. If, Delicious if irony. I'm nothing if not a team player. I'll you are, sir. You are, sir. All right, Todd. Tell me when the clock you? starts, baby. We'll get this in an hourglass. All right. And go. Hail to the freaking <laughs> victors, biatches. The University of Michigan, Wolverines, baby. And you guys need to stop talking because this is my 90 seconds. And I'm going to play this song, and it goes just longer than 90 seconds, and I'm going to get it all out there. The University of Michigan Wolverines are whooping the shit out of them freaking Iowa Hawkeyes right now on their way to the college football championship, baby. And not for nothing. Not for nothing. 
I guess I didn't plan out the fact that I'm going to be talking. It's going to be echoing back at me while I'm playing the freaking theme song. So hang on a second. I'm going to turn my sound off for a second, turn the music off for a second and just say this. The University of Michigan Wolverines have been good for a while, a long while. And I wanted to point something out. I, I, I was out to dinner last night with a gentleman from Utah, and he said, you got to talk about how good the Wolverines really are and how good they've been. And I said, you know, you're right. Do you know, if you watch the NFL this year, you would realize that uh, Cedric, is it, is it uh, Wilson from the Jets, Alave from the Saints, and Najigma Smith uh, on the uh, Seattle Seahawks are all top-tier receivers. And oh, yeah, the rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud, yeah, yeah, he, all those guys, Oh, I'm sorry, Todd. We're all out of time. Michigan last year. <laughs> and that's what? all the time we have for 90 Second Sports. Todd, it's always a pleasure. And I didn't even waste any time this time. Oh, you wasted plenty oh, of time. Hold on. Yeah, there was a lot of time wasted. A lot of time. editorializing. At least 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I never get Plus, long dude, enough. Aren't they only up 17 nothing? 17 dick right now, baby. In the third quarter? So what are you going to do if they, I mean, God forbid. If they way to jinx blow, that blow one, buddy. Well, hold on a second. Hold on yeah. a second. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say something here, and I hate to do this because again, people know that I'm humble. I'm not cocky. But the last time Iowa scored 17 points in two quarters was the year 19 and 1903. <laughs> when they beat freaking Idaho soap factory. Uh <laughs> All I'm 20. saying is it, it's not the it's 17 nothing is Dude, necessarily a beat. Iowa right? couldn't score 17 yeah, points whoa, whoa, in two whoa, years. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are we doing here? What's going on? <laughs> do, you, do, I, do I need to do it again? I mean, <laughs> yeah. have we, sorry, have sorry, we boys. completely lost control? I'm not, I'm not helping. I take no, full responsibility. Not. Hail to the Vickers. Listen. Hail to the Vickers. You, 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 don't, you don't take an alcoholic into a fucking liquor store and be like, hey, why don't we just take a look around? It's, it's 90. <laughs> Nick, you didn't. You didn't hear at the production meeting? It's 90-ish seconds for it. Yeah. I thought it was, hey, it's the holiday season. I thought we were, I was getting 190 seconds. Well, you're in uh, between we can, holidays right now. You're, you're, uh, if We can talk about that at a podcast meeting. We can, we can, we can spitball the idea. If anything, I have a grievance. Taking, if anything, you're taking away from the time, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Them, so work must intrude, and now we need to probably go swing it all the way back from that into people getting uh, their hitting their nuts on the railings and going to TT's TikToks. Are you ready? TT's TikToks. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, Corey. The Taoist tortoise himself, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Corey Seleski. All right, so I this love this song. <laughs> first, my guy for you guys here. This is a uh, a mom who's going through a drive-through with her daughter in the back, and you can tell she's in a bit of a hurry, and she's basically asking her daughter what she wants and. She's immediately just rifling off to the cashier what what her daughter's giving her. Clarifying question. No. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, what do you want? Hamburger? Hamburger? French fries? French fries? Salt. Fart. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, love I love it. I thought that was pretty <laughs> slick of the, the kid. Hamburger? Hamburger? French fries? Salt. Fart. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. Yep. All right. So this next one, uh, Todd, I know you are a, a fan of the news clips. You say nudes? That too. You know what, baby? Those two. Send nudes. <laughs> so this this news anchor, uh, she just roasts the shit out of this guy with one one little comment. Uh, and you can take part in our morning of giving today. Our Leslie, Hort we got Leslie's name too, did we not? Peach's Cookie Fingers. Peach's Cookie Finger. Down in the. Disregard that. This is a different clip than what I thought I was playing. 
I remember this one. All right, so, so go back to the beginning. All right. and, and up go back and shouldn't and shouldn't yep. they, they shouldn't these not be set up? I mean, there's bad TikToks if you have to set them up, right? No, no, but but hold on. We we we've, we've got a lot of audio only listeners who cannot see what we're what we're sharing. Gotcha. So we got at least gotcha, sort of gotcha, set gotcha. the tone, mm -hmm. right? All right? Correct. All right. Sorry, this is a the, a news anchor that they have a, a woman on the streets, a newswoman that they're going to be cutting over to, and apparently she didn't get the the memo of what they were going to be discussing when they cut over to her on the street. She's like at a Christmas uh, tree light, tree she's lighting a, or something like a that. A tree lighting festival. Yeah. Very something. family friendly. But they don't know how that how they're going to dish it off to her. Right. They're just about to say, "Hey, uh, yeah. let's uh, we're going to dish it off to you in a second. Yeah. It should have been a smooth transition, but this ended up happening. Uh, and you can take part in our morning of giving today. Our Leslie, we got Leslie's name too, did we not? Peaches Cookie Fingers. Peaches. So that's supposed to be an elf name. Yep. Cookie <laughs> Finger. Down in the parking lot. What? <laughs> that's your elf. Okay, what? <laughs> yeah, Is that elf. my stripper name? It's <laughs> elf. Word. Christmas elf. Oh! <laughs> Christmas elf name. <laughs> Uh, peaches sticky fingers? Cookie fingers. <laughs> <laughs> because peaches sticky fingers is a better stripper name than elf name is what I'm thinking. Everything That's is exactly fine. what I was gonna say. Everything oh is God. fine here. The sad thing is she probably got fired, but I really think she should have been promoted. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully she's a perfect get... stripper name. Yeah. Peaches sticky fingers. And she peaches if you're out there. Shit. I have a job for you. <laughs> oh my god! So, wait, hold on. What is? Hold on, Todd. What is Peach's Sticky Fingers going to be doing for you? Is she going to be cleaning out the chicken coop? <laughs> In a matter of speaking. <laughs> In a matter of speaking, be, because is she hey, going to be oiling your helicopter. I get. I Sorry, gave all my helicopter. Uh, all my ugly chickens get stripper names, so she's going to fit in fine with the flock. All right, she's going to be doing a lot with those fingers. <laughs> all right, so this last one I got here for you. Uh, it's another news broadcast, but it's not from the U.S. I honestly don't know what country it's from. It looks like Denang. But this... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not, not a country. country. But uh, <laughs> this, It's a province. And that's sure. science. Uh, this gentleman's trying to show off his new sweet scientific robotic arm that apparently has presets on it oh that you can just hit it to do stuff. What? Yeah. That's fantastic. I know, right? Watch this. Uh, C'est la deux. So clearly he had set his arm up to I'll be jerk himself curry. off. Well, a lot of times you bring these TikToks up and I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen this one. You took me by surprise in this one, sir. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, that, that, Ty, would you give him an A on this one, please? I, I give Corey a solid B plus on this effort. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> solid B plus. That's an A in my book. <laughs> Tough crowd in this room. Tough crowd. So there you guys go. That's TikToks for the week. Nice, beautiful, right. sir. What do you say we? Uh, well, we're not going to end it off with this. We're, we'll we'll we'll. We'll do this for a little bit, and then we'll, we're going to end it off, I think, with, uh, Todd, you got something uh, new here that you and Nick have been working on. So, yeah. Well, I yeah. thought Nick was, we were going to do some rapid fire. What's, what, do you, what do you call that? You lightning round? That? No, lightning we're, round. Not, we're not doing that for this show. No, what? Man. Squeak. <laughs> Easy on the mic there, buddy. No, no. We, we only talked about, like, three things. And, I got, uh, he's I got like, five oh, of them, though. These I got, would be interesting. I got five. And we were talking about them in regards to right. Dave Hill. We, we didn't say sure. anything about do anything tonight we should do it for us we yeah maybe on the second show see this is why you should have run with this todd you gave it to nick and all I of a sudden now you're not and doing then it, it and then it fell on the floor it fell on the floor fell flat it's gone now so i know i'll i'm just gonna say you fucked up i did you trusted him you should have done, done it yourself i know and so and so now we're gonna have to regroup and go and do not no we should do another 90 second sports All right. If I if I thought I could get away with another ninety second sports without getting punched in the face when I left, I, I would, but I don't think that I can. So what? Instead, instead we're gonna end with a, a question. This
All right, so for this installment of Nick's Existential Question, where we ask one question that are typically prepared as opposed to several questions <laughs> that we only talked about for five seconds before the show and we never nailed anything down, uh, let's go ahead and ask that one question. Um, so for this installment, we have... what? Okay, so someone... <laughs> somebody turn this around. Clarifying question. Yes. How'd you fuck this one up? We we have not. Somebody <laughs> messed up my cards here. Okay. All right. Good question. Exactly. A lot There's of a silence. Lot of, uh... do, 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 do. Well, hang on. Easy there, buddy. Oh, here Easy. we go. You don't need any copyright strikes. <laughs> okay. So what I want to know is uh, Hold I on. had two questions Hold lined on. up and now Hold they're on. gone. Before you get here, give you some. Is it time for a shot? Yeah, yeah, time for a shot. Yeah, time for a shot. I'm going to build Excellent. some time for you. Thank you. All right, Todd Dillon. Yes, sir. To close out the show, you're going back yes, to the well, back to the crown apple. Back to the crown right. apple, baby. Back to we're the crown. We're going back to the well. We're going back to an icy cold shot of Aunt Jemima's pancake syrup. Mm-hmm. Be delicious. Mm-hmm. I don't know about any Aunt Jemima anymore. If, uh, I think they changed the name of that, Bob. Sorry, just Jemima then? Yep, <laughs> was, that's was, it. Was Aunt the problem? Oh, Aunt Jemima. Was, Aunt was the problem? That's it. Aunt right, was the problem it. there? All right. Yeah, let's so, do the shot. Uh, so, hey, if you're new to the yep. podcast, Am uh, I getting a shot us. too or no? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Nothing for you, sir. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. You lost your <laughs> questions. You lose, sir. Celancia. I like how I bought him some time, and for my troubles, I got made fun of. You came wow. back with a shot for yourself. Yeah, you did. I you kind of sucked. Up. I, I have, I for the last 30 times, have poured you shots very eloquently. I, I, I did pour you a shot. Can you, you pour just, a shot just eloquently? You just kept it next to yourself? Clarifying question. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's the last time I'm going to buy you some time. Thanks. I have a next clarifying question. fucking sweat. Yes. Can you Todd. eloquently pour a shot? Eloquently? Of course you yes. can. Yes, have you never seen me pour a shot? It's eloquently, work of goddamn art. Do you not see the the right eloquently? foot goes in the air? He leans over and that's not, that's not. one hand goes up into a swan. It's like Barishnikov poured that shot that's for you. That's not goddamn that's Russian that. ballet. That's right. Okay, so for this installment of the existential question, we apologize for the wait. What do you? What what one thing <laughs> from your past? One thing from your past that you really, really, really enjoyed? It could be a, a part of clothing or anything to do. I guess relatively that would be quote unquote fashionable. Hold on, what is what is the question? That was kind of a long So the the question is, is something from the past, what do you wish could become fashionable or popular again that you used to love? That is oh. no, that is completely outdated now. That, that you just, they don't have it. They don't sell it. Are they don't you do dudes it. even old enough to answer this question? Oh yeah. Uh we do have okay. a past. All right. We we have a past. <laughs> Far shorter though. <laughs> Our, of course well, it is. I mean, our you, past is, has not yeah. gone <laughs> into the Century Club, but, <laughs> no. you know. So, anyhow. So, what what is it from your past that, that you wish could come come back around and be popular again? I I, I think I have an answer, but I, I'm going to have to run it past you because I don't. Mm, I see what you did there. So, my answer <laughs> is is Jinko jeans, but I feel like those are making a comeback right I now. I don't know what okay. those are. First I have of no all. Idea what- Jinko. First of Todd all, Todd and I are too old to know what you're talking first about. First of all, Corey, I don't feel like you ever lined up at any point in your life with. Oh, is he called bullshit on the Jenko jeans? Or associated with Jenko jeans ever? Wow. Oh yeah, I, Jenko or I didn't Jenko? Know this was going to be a judgment. So Jenko, so. for for people that don't understand, GNCO Jenko jeans um, were jeans that each pant leg. Was about eight times as wide as a normal pant leg. <laughs> You're talking about the '60s bell bottom. Nope, the, they're no, no, no. The whole. The, so imagine a bell bottom at the bottom. Yep. Times two, and that's the whole pant leg. It's like one big pipe of denim. Spell it's it the, again. It's, when was that? Popular? It's like it's like J N C O in the '90s, early '90s. Jenko jeans. Early '90s. And and they were. Where was I? There, there was yeah. There you go. People wore that shit. Yes. Yes, in the nineties. So, so the the more importantly, Corey wore that shit. You did not. So, 
Jinko. You fucking wore those? Hang on. If you let me fucking I'm talk, just, I'll tell I'm, you. I'm just uh, flabbergasted. If Jinko actually had, they had different levels. Mm, did they? They, I'll, I have them right here. You can actually see. Oh, so they, they did have. I can see through the tablecloth. I don't see Jenko jeans. <laughs> Not currently on. Oh, okay. again, I wish I did. <laughs> Why? They, they, they honestly, they had, they did have like different levels of how wide the pant leg would be. So they had some that weren't that ridiculous. Yeah. Um, looked more like almost like a little bit of an oversized boot cut. Right. I, I had several pairs of those. So it was very common for so Jenko jeans, um, like the um, for our Letterkenny fans out there, uh, the equivalent of skids, people like that, people that um, wore like black pants and chains and uh, uh, listened to Nine Inch Nails and dyed their hair green and and had little spike earrings and things like that. Like those are, are the types of of folks that wore Jenko jeans. Jenko jeans were for the skids of the, of the 90s society. Yeah. And they were very well known for being wet and frayed. Wet? On the bottom of the jeans. Oh, because they, they, so dra- they were so big? They were so big, they would drag on the shit. ground. They would, dra- they would drag. <laughs> the so the bottoms would be like soaking wet and dirty. That sounds amazing. It was disgusting. And and then and they were like ripping to shreds because they'd get caught in doors and they would drag but on the ground. Guess, it, you were cooler the more shreddy and shitty they were on the bottom. To, to my understanding, I never ever ever wanted to wear fucking Jenko jeans in my life ever. Yeah, not not a little bit. Um, they look pretty horrible to me. Yeah, it was like it was like <laughs> two it was like two spools of denim, like like just sewn together, and, and you somehow got inside these. It, it was yeah it was, it was it was a lot of denim, so so wow. So uh, Dylan Dylan Collins says uh, there's a guy on TikTok that rollerblades around with literal playstations in the pockets of his Jenko jeans. Uh, yeah, so as a result, what? since since the jeans were so wide, as you saw, so it, they were just as wide at the bottom as they were at the top, um, and so your pockets were like these giant Santa Claus pants pockets. So yeah, you could you could yeah. put you could put a whole PlayStation One inside the back pocket of a Jenko. Oh, you could you could fit a ton of shit back there. As a matter of fact, I, I was trying to respond to him on Facebook, but it's not allowing me. Um, G- Gina said, "Please stop." Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> that seems like the most apropos statement I've heard. I follow that I follow that guy on TikTok, Dylan. It's, it's pretty funny. Okay, so Corey's vote is for Jenko jeans. By the way, I would pay good money to see Corey in some uh, giant Jenko jeans. But what you're saying is I, you'd pay good money to be able to wear a pair of those jeans. So what happens? I, I have I've yet to find a picture where the jeans are as wide as they are long because Corey's so short. I can only imagine. So it'd be like a skirt. It's like skorts. So Corey misses wearing skorts? Wow. They, were like, uh, they were like denim skirts for each leg. <laughs> <laughs> big big denim skirts no de- denim dresses for each leg cause, yeah yeah because the skirt mm-hmm. should be i'm assuming short so just to i may be paraphrasing but the question was what fashion do you wish th- would come back yeah like, like what trend or fashion that yeah. that was once fashionable back in the day that you're like god i wish that that would come back because i would okay, love so, to wear those but well that's the key i, I, I got love to wear those i mean if it was a couch that you were like no oh, this uh this chrome couch that I thought but if was Corey amazing. Is saying that that slipped jeans off of were every time. Hilarious to look at because other people wore them. That's different than no, no. He would have jeans because I would want to wear them. No, it's not, nothing to do with hilarious. The, hilarity has no place in here. Corey okay. wants to wear those jeans. I never said that. Well, that's you I, said you I, own I several gathered, pair and you wish they would you. come back. Yeah, not those, not those big ridiculous pairs. But that's okay, but they're still well, Jenko jeans. Yeah. I, I don't know that your answer is really answering his question then because it is. Yeah, because he, he, <laughs> How? he what, what he's saying is the, the, there's a, there's there's a lot of ribbing towards these jeans. Yeah, uh, he probably was assuming that we would all be like, "Oh my god, those are amazing! I wish they were back too." But we we were no, not. I I, I can so definitely he, see why you wouldn't want them back. He had a different version of Jenko, so he had like on a spicy scale, like mild to hot, and uh-huh. he he had the mild version of the Jenkos, and so he's saying I. The, the zero st- spice version. Nos- yeah, nostalgically, he wishes that his version was was probably okay, back. I, I, got I, I guess a a better way to put it would be like to be able to find good boot cut jeans anywhere. Yeah, that is a far cry from Jenko jeans. That, my friend. No, it's it's not. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not though, because again, like I, I said, I know I'll, I'll I'll try to find the pair that. Yeah, but they they had like they were just amazing boot cut jeans. 
Yeah, these they, were. They, they, you they, see they what Dylan just they, said? These were. <laughs> These were like those. Uh, no, because that's what people know them for. That those huge, the big ones. So, Dylan said they'd go great with uh, Todd's Harley vest that he wore a while ago. Oh, that would be a good look. Good call. Back. That would be a good look. So okay. T- so t- to be to be fair, right? Yeah, Push the know, button. You know, keep on. You're gonna have to. Uh, yeah. To be, fair. to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. If you're just joining us. The existential question of the week or this installment was what was once fashionable or that you really liked back in the day, some sort of fashion that you wish could come back. Corey's answer was Jenko jeans. I am just relishing in the idea of Corey in really, really baggy denim. But uh, because this is the guy that hates jeans also. I mean, it'd be like a score for him for Corey. So, okay. So moving on, Bob, do you have anything? I, I don't. Okay, I I'll do. got yet. So I have one. Uh, okay, so Todd, go ahead, bud. Members only jackets. The members. So for for those that you want are those to come back. Yeah, well, here's are, the thing. For those that are not in the fifty plus club, can you explain? I, members only. With the the jackets with the little. I don't even know why they had the little uh, like button epaulets. Like the button thing on the shoulders. Yeah, it, yeah those are but, epaulets. Yeah, that's it, what it okay, was. epaulets for the common man and. Uh, they were, but but I was was it was uh, very very poor in my youth, and so I had like the there and and so they made every knockoff under the sun. They had VIP only, like uh, less than only. They had every other freaking made up <laughs> name. Like Thirty percent members, but members, members only jacket. was. What what you but it's you know this like members only and triple fat goose were like the name brand stuff and Jordache jeans. And I couldn't, we, we couldn't afford any of that shit when I was young. And so I wish that would come back because now I could buy real members only and not be wearing okay, VIP so only. So is that the spirit? I, I get his answer, but is that in the spirit of your question? Because he never wore them. I had a VIP only. But you didn't wear members only. I mean, no. I he, couldn't it, afford it. it, it I, I understand what he's saying. Like, he, he couldn't afford it at the time. And he always wanted... Um, he wanted I wanted to be in the club. Him. Yeah, so I I'm okay with that as long as he's willing. Like, if it made some sort of resurgence, like I would like, wear it yes, today. I, I would go out. I wear my right I wear my members only right now. If they if they had one at the store or Triple Fat Goose, Todd. I'd have both those right now, and hopefully, wouldn't get shot neither. Todd, you know you know it's 2023, buddy. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a link right now for a members only fucking jacket if that's what you're looking for. It's, it's not that, but it's that in big style. Listen to the question, Corey. It's no, not, not in style right now. No, Corey, I'm not saying not. if it came back. No, no, no. No, I give myself a members uh, only. I wouldn't I wouldn't have a VIP only. Again, again, I will send you links to people. There's plenty of people out there that think they're very in style. Corey, not members, Mark. <laughs> but members they're not only. in style. That's that's the point. That's shorter, the point. Shorter than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so so Todd is the members only jacket. So um so aside from epaulets, uh for for those that were born you know, can, after, you, can you bring up a picture of a members only yeah. jacket after 1975? Can you explain to us what <laughs> what those are? <laughs> have you seen uh, Have you seen the thriller video? Yes. The so the, the red jacket that Michael Jackson's wearing. Yeah, no, but that's it not a be red, jacket. and it's not bedazzled in any way. But His was very, not bedazzled. <laughs> the the ja, the, the, the jacket you? that Michael Jackson wore. Michael Jackson wore a red leather coat with. With I feel yes. like there were some no, that wasn't that was not a members only. There was exactly. no, no, I know it wasn't. But there's no bedazzling. <laughs> Corey, there was do your ma- do your technical magic. Shit. Put up a members only jacket. If again, diamond zombie <laughs> on the back. I sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Corey. You're about yeah, to do it. I, if you give me a sure. goddamn second, <laughs> sure. I will. Sure. I have something to lead up to it with. <laughs> yes, Todd. Yeah. You yes, live, sir. You live in Seattle, correct? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, you guys have a. It's I know it's kind of a. It's it's like an off-brand store. Um, it's called Target. <laughs> do, do you guys have those out yeah, there? It's, yeah, it's right. It's right above Walmart. Okay. All right, buddy. Well, look at this. For the low, low price of ninety-eight dollars. Where are the epaulets? There's you, no epaulets there. Mm. That's not a true members only jacket. That's not I a members he, only jacket. I think he just saw. And, it, and, he just, first, and the key uh, was, Corey, you're missing the whole point. Still, the key was. I'm not missing shit. The members only <laughs> jacket 
the members only was the the thing that made those jackets the thing. The fact that you could buy VIP only, not quite as good only, and all the other onlys that you could think of. Todd. They made all those, and I had one of them. I had actually all of them. Todd. You just told us you were too poor to have any of them. <laughs> no, no, I had a VIP only, man. That was like half the price of a members only. I mean, all right. Well, Todd, if you use your eyes and you can read where it says members only, this is the actual members only jacket. That's the new style. And this is also, again, I don't, and I don't know what to say. Wait, hold on. Is that the team members only target coat that they give out to the people that work there? It's kind of weird. No that shit. They use red no to shit. That That's the freaking. <laughs> Exactly, you know team what? members only. I, honestly, for for people born after sixty eight, we're just taking a stab in the dark here. And he probably, I, I get it. Corey saw members only. He saw a black guy. He's like, this must be it. So, but, <laughs> right, hold, but hold we, we we I'm appeal you, we appeal to right your now. and Bob's infinite older wisdom, and we want we want to know exactly what it is. <laughs> so the, Wait, hold this, on. This will this will actually is that the guy from yeah, Stranger yes, Things? Yes. This this will this will bring it all full. Circle. It'll bring it home. Yes. Because there are two distinct characteristics of a members-only jacket. The first one was the epaulets, which were pronounced. They were, it was almost yeah, like yeah. the top of the epaulette went to the middle of the collar. Yes. But the collar was like a band collar that went, you know, around your neck. It was raised up by like an inch. Uh, we had to wear something this, to the fake military ceremony. And then, and then there were, the other thing was that there was always a flap that hung down with like two buttons so that you could, which no one ever did. But you could, if you wanted to, you could zip it up, and then you could do that so that your neck didn't get cold from the wind, or that you could hide your fucking trachea tube if you had emphysema. So uh, the, the but no one ever did, but it was there. It would always hang down, and you had the little little badge there, right there on the breast pocket that said "Members Only," just like Steve from Stranger Things is wearing. That is exactly what a members only jacket was. This is exactly what I just showed you guys in red. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no, it is. Not. Oh, no, no there's, there's epaulets on this one. There, the other one had epaulets. You they just, were, they you were just super, couldn't... super uh, low. low For key. those of you who can't see <laughs> the show are and are listening in. Kidding me? Are you kidding me right Wait now? <laughs> super low key. What is on the left and on the right? Are those not fucking super low key? Those are super low key epaulets. When they happy, don't have scrambled eggs on them, they're harder to see. Yeah. That's true. Happy Corey, holiday. Corey, bring yeah. up the red one one more time because I, I didn't see any on that one. There, okay, I didn't. I didn't. I know. I, I, know, I know. I know. And I will in a second. But I'm telling you, dude, for we're wearing a uniform for so long, <laughs> that is. I feel n- like that, we struck a nerve, Todd. That, that is not an epaulet by any means. No, of course that, it isn't. That's the lowest key one you can. And, have. and for not for nothing, here's the funny thing too. The internet doesn't uh, actually go back into history. So, and, and again, Nick Nick probably hit the thing. It, it, this is probably a genre, but the true members-only jackets, back, when they came out, when it was the shit, they were black. There was no, and they did make other colors, but if you were in the, if you were in the club, you had a black members-only jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you, so the that, only people but, who wore blue members-only jackets were the ones who couldn't find a black one? I think I think I know exactly exactly. You weren't really so in the, the black, club. You the were black like, one was was the legit. That was the one to have bl- a black members only jacket for a brief time, uh, similar to the triple fat goose. That was those were the coats of our day. And so, so give so Todd give I, us um give us like a price range like in today's uh mindset version of the price like what i want to say i want to say the members only jackets were like 50 bucks and triple fat gooses no, were actually no, fairly they expensive were not 50 bucks unless my understanding of 50 bucks in the 80s was like a million dollars but what they that's weren't what that I'm expensive saying. So like, they, today's date would they be like a, a vip only jacket? was like 24 oh, bucks so. that's why people got the vip only so they'd be like what, and like a three hundred fifty dollars jacket? It, today, it was probably. at least double. The triple, triple, triple fat like gooses were a pair, a really good pair of jeans. That you got. Okay, yeah, so fifty today bucks, good, like uh, Jordache. But when Bob was young, when Bob was young, I think Jordache was the, the so brand. a good pair of jeans today would probably be fifty. No, McGillicuddy was the brand. A good when I was in a school. good pair of jeans today would probably be what sixty bucks today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fuck, I no, I I don't even know what. I don't know. I, I don't. No I don't buy really good jeans. I, don't I buy just uh, right. like Levi's. And my kids have never been like or Wranglers. I, I need to have the right. My Wranglers. kids have never been like I have to have brand name jeans. But there are brand names that I've heard before. I'm like, oh, I've heard that before. I feel like they're like in the hun- multiple hundreds of dollars. Yeah, and by the way, no, if, you're wearing, no. if you're wearing jeans with the little rhinestones and a pocket button on the back, then no, not like Ed don't Hardy listen to our shit, show anymore. But like 
br- brand names that you and I have like maybe sort of kind of heard of. Yeah. But that are regular looking jeans, but I I I will I will do my homework, get and get back to my kids who will talk to their friends <laughs> and we'll get uh we'll get a a legitimate average price for a really good new pair of jeans. Listen, we can cut all that bullshit out. All you have Not to do, no, 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 no. our audience might actually want to know. All this. you have to do is Google <laughs> how much it, Google I think how much and everybody's Amy. missing the point. No. I'm not no. saying that I that I want to buy a members only jacket. No, no, no. I I'm get that. I get that. You didn't have it. Was, you couldn't afford it. You want it. I get it, it. Well, when it's in style, right? Yeah. Like, I think so members, it, when I see people because I see people in members only jackets all the time now, and I chuckle at them. Except for they're still winning because I couldn't afford one back when they were the shit. Do you really see them all the time? Yeah, you're welcome, Steve. Wow. But so so the thing is, is is if you ease if you just looked up how much they were at the time, and then looked up you know fifty dollars versus today's date from the eighties. Ask ChatGPT. No, hold on, I don't think you know how Google works. Google. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I don't think we need to let the internet know how Google. Google 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 will detect my age and it will only return uh, search results that I can understand. (laughs) Okay, so I don't have young person Google. I have old man Google. So the the members mark jacket, which I think is pretty cool, I would actually wear one of those. Um, but the epaulets, I feel Cor- like Corey had to go in the bathroom and cool down from the whole red members only jacket. Well, be, well, <laughs> Corey and I understand epaulets as being a part of the job, right? They they are specifically on uniforms, you know, for things like whistle chains and clipping radio mics to to your shoulder, or uh, putting. Um, some sort of insignia that shows, you know, what level of command you are. I mean, you know, they are derived yeah. from a paramilitary kind of thing. Back in the 80s, kids that wore them, they served no function. Well, whatsoever. right, but it's in that version, which I didn't know that's what that coat was, but in that version, I could see it. Like the right. fake military shirts that have, like, you know, chains and stuff hanging around. I, I can't get on board with that, but that that was pretty cool. So what what is yours? I I went last because I had to think about this, and I gotta be honest with you. I I can't think of a single goddamn thing. Okay, I'll go. You still think? <laughs> Thank you. Um. So wait, wait, I'm not done. I was just throwing the towel. <laughs> just I, you're gonna come back to me? Yes. Okay. Think of some, what. There's right. not something. I got some that ideas for you, Bob. Was since, popular since I'm back a couple in years the day. younger than you, and I know where you, the where you came from. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um. So mine would be it's it's a toss up. It really is a 50-50 toss up. And it's between surf style jackets and hyper color shirts. Surf You're big style hyper color. What? You're big in the hyper color. I I think it was technology that was way beyond the time that we really didn't come back to until just recently. Like you have a dye for t-shirts that changes based on temperature. Back in the fucking early nineties, like that's I'm sure it was probably very remedial. Like as far as science goes, they're probably like, Yeah, it's really not that hard to do. But I think more things should be like that, you know? And color change. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> so hypercolor shirts were almost like a tie dye that uh so you get like a purple and black or like a pink and black or a yellow and black or whatever it may be. And you would put your hand on it, and it would change to a completely different color based on the heat from your hand. Oh, okay. So they the, they changed colors. Okay, yeah. Yep. So it would go from like a purple shirt to being bright yellow, like a bright yellow handprint. So, you, so your armpits would always be purple. No, I was gonna say yeah. If you were riding your bike up to the corner store, by the time you get there, this would be this dark ring right around. It wasn't sweat. Thankfully, it was I, just heat. I was I was I was young enough to where that never happened, and I I, 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 I I go in the opposite direction of physical activity, so that never never perspired as far as hold on. Have we just discovered why he doesn't like sports. Why? Because of hyper color shirts. I don't think sports teams were using hypercolor shirts, but they should to see who's working the hardest. Because <laughs> they don't have any technology that can tell no, any different than that. No, they should. Nick just is always sitting there in a very cool room. Yep. That's right. Just two fans just blowing right up. Hey, come on, man. Let's, let's go do that. I can't, guys. I move a little too much. Shirt's going to change color. I'm telling yeah. you. Hypercolor shirts were awesome, uh, but surf styles were cool, too. And uh, so, yeah, those are, those are the things that I wish would come back. 
So, Bob, what about parachute pants for you? I had a pair of parachute pants. You didn't like them? I, I, I did at the time, but I don't wish they would come back. Okay. Like, they were of a time. I'm trying to help you out. No, no, no. So, uh, here's my answer. Kevin Cromwell, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy, Kevin Cromwell. Here's my answer. You could tell me, because I'm reading this question a couple different ways. You could t- you, Feel free to tell me. Well, you're not reading it at all. But both of ahead. those are wrong. All the stuff that I was able to wear, which really wasn't a whole lot, mm-hmm. um, I did have a pair of parachute pants. I was luck. I felt like I was blessed to get those. Well, you were white and privileged, but yeah, no, I, I, but no, <laughs> they wouldn't let me. But no, I didn't have any of the cool shit that they wore. Um, so I had those. That's over. Now, Corey, rightly so, might say, "Oh, you've recreated that by the pants you've bought, where the whole leg zips off." And it becomes a pair of shorts. No, that's the two it's totally different things. Pants. I get it, but the spirit is there, and that's fine. I don't wish the parachute pants would come back, though. Now there were <laughs> things that. <laughs> now are you talking about like the MC Hammer pants? No, parachute that's pants. Different. Zippers all over, like all manner of pockets. Okay, which is really essentially what like we kind of come and back mostly anyway. and mostly nylon. Yes, like that the like the models with crazy hair. Uh, like the Vidal Sassoon models, like when you would go to like a hair shop, like to get your hair cut, they would be wearing like these all zipper pants and they'd have like crazy hair. Somebody like needs to bring up a pair of pants for Nick like, to educate Nick. They weren't like cargo pants or khaki pants with a whole bunch of zippers in it. These were actually, like Todd said, I think they were nylon or they were some sort of shiny material or something. And didn't they didn't they taper at the bottom? No, no, they just got bigger. They got bigger. they were they a straight leg for the most part. Oh, yeah. Um, and- yeah, because they went from you know, the 60s, 70s, bell bottom, more flared leg to more of a straight leg there. And then once you got in the late 80s, early 90s, it was all about pegging your pants and rolling them up at the at the bottom. Well, these young bucks don't know about pegging their pants. That's true. Uh, but young I would bucks say, know nothing about pegging. I would say, <laughs> <laughs> I would say that uh, there were some brands that I never got to wear when I was a kid that I was jealous of and other kids got the, like, Roots clothing was all was always huge. It was a big, like, oh, man, I wish that my parents would buy that for me or we could afford that. Uh, do I wish it would come back? I mean, no. I mean, I, I, I could buy it now if I wanted to, but I don't. So I'm not really sure I have an answer to this question, unless I'm misunderstanding the question. Gina just wants to let everyone know that there's nothing she really wants to come back except for the time she wasted watching this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And then she said, "It was good until we got to this part, right?" I'm trolling the room. (laughs) It was it was good until we got to this part. Mary did drop drop some knowledge. Yeah, she said, "Yeah, if you wanted to come back, just wear it. It's fine." That's that's what I think. Oh, she she said, "Wear it. Maybe maybe it'll come." No, no, I'm 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 saying she's gonna ride on Mary's coattails. The 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 the, the clothes that I wear now are clothes that I want to wear, and you know they're not anything that came back from anywhere. Well, actually, can I can I amend my question then? Uh huh. Then answer. I think that the, the banana hammock speedo should come back because I, I think I that. I speak on behalf of the world when I say no one wants to see you in that tub. <laughs> and I speak on behalf of Mary. She's just put up with that for this long, so. <laughs> I think that should come back. The <laughs> the the hardcore like swimmer speedo for all. I'm watching for everybody. the chat just to see if she jumps. It should come back for everybody. Thumbs up or thumbs down to the banana hammock. You know you can pull it up on your computer. It's easier if I just watch his phone. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, so we got effort. So we got Genco jeans. We got parachute pants. We have hypercolor shirts or surf styles. And Todd's was the uh, banana members only coats. No, no, I changed mine. Yeah. To what? The speedo. The original Speedo. No, 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 you can't. The original Speedo. Did that ever come back? It should. I feel like Tomorrow. it's so big in Europe. Yeah, yeah I'm down. You're just, yeah, you're just born in the wrong country, Todd. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. That seems like a good place to end it. Hey, thank you for joining on behalf of Nick and Corey and Todd. This is Bob. We'll see you next time. Peace out.